It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the CFPs on the program. Today, we got a, a CFP sandwich here in the KFG studios. Across from me, founder of Corhorn Financial Group, Kevin Corhorn, and between us, two health insurance experts, Ted Foster and Craig Weicker. Yes, two thorns between two roses. <laughs> in order to qualify for less expensive health insurance through healthcare.gov, your income for that year must be below certain thresholds. But those rules have changed this year's, and we've got our amazing in-house health experts, Ted and Craig, with us on the program today to help you understand these changes and more. This year's? I caught that. I caught that. I'm just kidding. All right. Hey, if you have a question for us, we'd love to hear from you. Reach out to us. You can find us a few different ways. Call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com. You can submit a question right there on the right. Turns into an email. Comes straight to me. We talk about it, or I'll get back to you, and then we'll talk about it. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show and leave comments there. Okay, so two weeks ago, had a client reach out a little alarmed saying, okay, the IRS just deposited about $7,000 into my bank account. And, uh, and I said, okay, what are we doing this weekend? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, is, that, is there a problem? And I knew exactly what it was. And I said, no, there's no problem. See, he and his family have been getting health insurance through the healthcare.gov, through the exchange, through Affordable Care Act. And he owns a business and she owns a business as well. And so they're never too sure exactly where their income is going to come in. And certainly for 2020, they that their income is going to be a lot lower than what it en ended up turning out to be. So they had to pay all those premium tax credits back when we filed their tax return in February, and they owed a bunch of money. Well, then in March, they passed the American Rescue Plan Act, the worst title for any stimulus bill ever, and they forgave all of that. And so, yeah, if that's you, you may have gotten an automatic repayment reimbursement from the IRS for all those tax credits. That's what we're talking about today. Guys, will you help? What, what in the world are premium tax credits? So based on your income, you're going to get some assistance in buying your health insurance. Uh, it's called the Affordable Care Act for a reason. That is what the government deems to be affordable based on your income. So if your income is low, you're going to get a larger tax credit to assist you in purchasing. If your income is high, you're going to get a smaller or no tax credit. Yeah. And, and the, I, I think the key point here is those are tax credits. It's not just an automatic reduction in your premium where, hey, you, you get this insurance for less cost every single month. It's, it's actually a tax credit. It is. And, you know, I always find it's interesting. So many things that the federal government does are on paper. So they move the money from this organization to this. This is when they actually give the insurance companies the money to help you pay your premium. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit confusing. It's kind of like the free lunch <clears throat> program where it's means tested. So if your income is at a certain level, you're going to get certain help. But the way that this works is a little bit confusing because if my income is at a certain level and I normally would pay $1,000 a month for my family's health care, they reduce that and that could be, if that's reduced by $500 a month, that's fine as long as we get to the end of the year and my income is what I said it would be yeah. at the beginning of the year. Yeah, this is confusing. Now, we're going to talk about how income, basically the, the what we're talking about today is how since, oh gosh, it's been a decade or, or more, now your income, your tax return impacts your health insurance. And so because of these rules, financial planning and health insurance now are fused together, okay? And, and they are connected, and you can't separate them, all right? Um, but so unlike some of you know, Medicare and whatnot we're going to talk about, 
where it shows up, you know, you've got to look at your income from a couple years ago. For these premium tax credits, you have to say in advance, hey, here's what I think my income is going to be. You receive tax credits based on that. And then there's a true up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so right. there's reconciliation when you file your taxes. When you file your taxes. Okay. So, Kevin, is there, so what income number are we talking about here? Gross income? or adjusted gross income, taxable income, when it comes to uh, how much, I mean, what what income number does the health insurance company, do they care about? Adjusted gross income. I, I wanna, is it adjusted gross income or modified adjusted gross income? Modified adjusted gross income. Yeah, it can't be that simple, Mike. <laughs> Which you is can't. The, it's the M isn't just for modified, I think it's also for mysterious. Mysterious, yes. there yes. you go. As in you can't get there from here. Right. There are some planning ways around it, though. If your income turns out to be a little bit higher than you originally stated, you can do some, you know, HSA contributions if it's a, if it's a high deductible plan. You can do IRA. You can do other retirement account contributions to help manage that number. So it, yes, there there is. This is the interesting thing because this is a show about financial planning, and so we are already like knee deep in jargon and. And uh, we, we may have already lost you, but if you're still here with us, this is a show about financial planning. There are six areas of financial planning and the two area, well, the three areas that it, I mean, it goes really, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> really the protection planning. That's the area that we're kind of focused on today and talking about health insurance, but that is factored into your tax planning, but it's also factored into your present financial position and what is your budget. Because there are some pretty amazing, even after the fact, things that you can do to avoid paying back some of the uh, premium tax credit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, planning. You know, we've, we've ran into this before, uh, uh, all of us. So you can make an HSA contribution for last year after, mm -hmm. provided that you had opened the account last year that's right so you have to plan in advance for something yeah. you may want to do on april 15th that's exactly right your hsa you need to not only have a you know qualifying high deductible health plan but you need to have an hsa health savings account opened with us at fidelity or at the bank or wherever before the end of the year and then you can still fund it up until april 15th yeah mm -hmm. yep. or whatever tax day will be that year yeah that's right um okay so it used to be, and I'm going to say used to be because the American Rescue Plan Act changed this for this year and for 2021 and 2022, used to be that your income needed to be below certain thresholds in order to qualify for these uh, these uh, premium tax credits, okay? And for, okay, let's simply, for a couple on, on uh, Affordable Care Act, healthcare.gov, Income needed to be below about sixty-eight thousand, and I'm going to approximate. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. but there have been changes to that. Can you guys <laughs> explain some of those changes? Okay. Well, yes. In the past, we looked at what was called the cliff. Take your example of sixty-eight thousand for that couple, and so the tax credits would reduce as your income grew and then when they reached that cliff they would just disappear that's right and with the american rescue plan act instead of that slope uh falling off a cliff the angle of that slope now changes and it's just a slower drop and it seems to go on forever so so said a little bit differently we're going to break this down coming up is there's no more i mean this this cliff has uh is gone for 2021 and 2022 we'll see if they make that permanent obviously they're trying to do all sorts of things and washington dc can't seem to get anything done um but basically you can make more than you previously were able to and still receive these premium tax credits. So planning's more important than ever for more of you. We've got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show. You're at the Wise Money Show channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show. It airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Also on podcast, if you're into those, check that out as well. Airs the exact same time. If you're thinking, hey, this is a little long for YouTube, 
These guys stretching it out, just give me the answer. Should have taken 25 seconds. That's a one-hour talk show, all right? Cut me some slack. So, <laughs> But if you want something more palatable, something shorter, every single business day we drop a next wise step video. So taking one financial concept, delivering it directly to how it can apply, how you can apply it to your financial life. So tune into those as well. So uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications. If you like the content, like the content and leave comments below. Thank you. All right. So we're meandering our way around here. So let's pick that back up and then we can talk about some financial planning. I'm assuming we've got, I know I've got several financial planning implications or stories that we can talk about. And then that'll weave into what are all of your options or how do you evaluate your options for health insurance before Medicare? And then we can just, I don't know, go from there. And we want to make sure to, I'm not comfortable assuming that they're going to not want their money back at the end of the year. So I am still very careful to give as accurate of an estimate as possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Because it's it's tempting to say, yeah, oh, hey, let's use 30000 because we don't have to pay anything back anyhow. It, it's it's work, It's only worked one year. Right. So let's bring that up as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you, you could say, hey, I'm, my income is only going to be 18000 Avoid mm -hmm. Medicaid. And so that story problem has to be just you, you just need to set the table for that one okay because it's still if this is not your situation it doesn't make any sense yeah, yeah. so the the, yeah. the people that are listening who've not done this just i would even right. i would re-explain it okay because that's postgraduate work yeah yeah it is yeah. because <laughs> um unless well unless you went to central and then it's uh just <laughs> <laughs> That's undergrad. 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 You took care of that in uh, <laughs> orientation. <laughs> That's great. All right. I love it. All right. Here we go. Second segment. If you if you have your health insurance purchased through what do they call it? Obamacare, uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act, Healthcare.gov. I like Healthcare.gov. I don't know what we're gonna call this thing, but if you get your health insurance through Healthcare.gov your income influences how much you pay, all right? And those rules have changed for 2021 and 2022. We're helping you with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, and then special guests today, Craig Weicker and Ted Foster, health insurance experts, helping us break this down. If you missed anything, every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast. Wherever you listen, go check it out. Search Wise Money Show, rate the show there. We appreciate it. And then subscribe or follow or whatever you need to do so that you're made aware every time we drop a new episode. Okay, guys, so let me just break this down. We were, uh, we've were we got a couple uh, chips on the airways today, right? So mm. Central, mm. right? <laughs> no? That oh, is Broncos, great. baby. Broncos, <laughs> that's right. You just have the same colors, and they're yeah. both pretty much. Yeah, anyway. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> and Mike is uh, representing. So Michigan State, Central Michigan, and Western Michigan. So, all yeah. right. So uh, to level the playing field, if you get your health insurance, uh, not through an employer, say you're self-employed or, or whatever, or you've retired, whatever, and you get it through healthcare.gov, you've got to state up front, here's what I believe my income is going to be for this year. And I mean your income. So Social Security, yeah, you got to list that there. It, 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 interest, dividends, yep, you got to include that too. Pensions, side hustles, all that sort of stuff. You got to list that stuff. And, and then based on that income, it will tell you whether you get any reductions in your premium. And it's not just free reductions, that's premium tax credits. And then when you file your tax return, they then say, okay, we'll prove it. You said your income was going to be this, is it? And if your income's higher, you got to pay some of those premium tax credits back. Now, last year, my summary doing okay? Like, so far, so okay. good. Doing great. So in the past, if your income was reached a certain level, all those tax credits were gone. That's the cliff mm -hmm. that Craig's talking about. And now for 2021 and for 2022, I think they're going to try and make this more permanent. It's a gradual slope, meaning once your income surpasses, and gosh, Kevin's going to get mad at me for this, trying to use numbers over the radio, but once your income surpasses 400% of the federal poverty level, you're only allowed, quote unquote, to spend 
eight and a half percent of your income towards health insurance. And so they look at how much you would normally pay, compare that to eight and a half percent of your of your income. And that determines whether you should get a credit or not. And so there's a slow, gradual reduction in your credit, depending on how high your income is. Correct. So the point here, guys, is you need to be doing planning. Planning now is more important, not just for those married, you know, married couples, if your income's below 68,000, it's now, you know, for a family of four, if your income's 110 or 120, right? And I'm sure you guys have some stories, but I mean, now it's, if you were in that situation, you were funding Roth maybe fund pre-tax. If you're in that situation and we're just saving up into emergency fund, you need to do comprehensive financial planning. Maybe your emergency fund is already full and you should contribute some dollars to an HSA to get your income down even lower and get some some unique premium tax credits. Fill in the blanks, guys, or, or, or what have I missed? No, I think you've done a good job, Mike. I mean, that that's the thing. Do the planning now. Do the planning prior to the end of the year because, as Ted mentioned earlier, there are some of these accounts that need to be opened. But inevitably, at, at least once a year during tax season, there's somebody that was planning on a certain amount of tax credits, and there was an event that happened that no one really foresaw, and um that event was unforeseeable. And this this event caused them to have their income considerably higher than they'd planned, and then they had to pay it back. And I've, I've sat in the hot seat across the table from clients and had to explain to them, listen, you owe $10,000. It's tax time, and you owe $10,000. And they say, well, we underpaid our income taxes. No, you didn't underpay your income taxes, but you did get a credit uh, related to your health insurance that you now have to pay back because when you inherited that money and uh, you cashed out the money that was in that annuity and had to pay taxes, it made your tax your taxable income higher. So with higher taxable income, it wiped out the credit. Now in 2020, yeah. It was interesting. Retroactively, right? right? Retroactively, after the fact, mm-hmm. they came through and said, listen, we're going to give everyone full full premium tax credit. Yeah. Is, that, is that how they did it? Yeah. So, I mean. Did they? Yeah. So, in the past, in the past, there's no benefit. And I would say even right now, there's no benefit of sandbagging. <laughs> you know, I, when you're going through healthcare.gov, there's no benefit to go in and say, yeah, I don't know. I probably make only twenty grand this year. When you know full well you're going to make eighty, right? And, I mean, you can do that, and you'll probably have health insurance for fifty bucks a month, and then you'll owe twelve grand or fifteen grand on your taxes. It will true up, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just in twenty twenty. For those of you that had a crystal ball and knew there was going to be this thing called the coronavirus and all the you know stimulus that came out of it. I mean, you could have gamed the system that year, but that's it. Other than that, I mean, it, it behooves you to be accurate as as accurate as possible with your income estimates. Yeah, but it is, and again, this this speaks to the need for planning because these things that come up that you're not anticipating, and people don't link those to, hey, okay, I know my income is going to be higher. Well, remember, your higher income means your credit is going to be reduced, but it doesn't get reduced real time. It gets trued up and reduced after the fact and you write a check to pay it back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got a situation, let's talk about some of the planning concepts, some of the stories that we've we've seen with this, and then how that could influence, how that could change 2021, 2022. We've got a situation where a friend of mine, we've been doing financial planning for a decade, and we'd been preparing for early retirement, retiring 63, um, but then two things happened. One, his company shut down, their plant shut down. So you can keep your job at 60, you'll just have to move. And who wants to do that, right? When they've got kids and grandkids in the area. So that wasn't very appealing, but then also his wife got cancer. And um, so he wanted to retire even earlier. Well, the plan we'd been working was, you're gonna need to solve this riddle. You're gonna need a bridge, which we were talking about yesterday. You're gonna need a bridge, a health insurance bridge from retirement until Medicare. What age is Medicare? 65. 65 still. Trick question. So, so right, that is a trick question. And so we'd been preparing for that bridge, okay? Well, 
it's just it turned out that the bridge needed to be even longer because he we were able to help him retire even earlier and his basically we've saved up a couple hundred thousand dollars in a non IRA account and we've been careful with cost basis as well so that at retirement he's going to collect his pension of 36,000 we're watching how much interest and dividends but the rest of his income he's just going to pull out of the savings account so his income is going to be about 50 grand and be able to get really affordable health insurance because of these premium tax credits that's correct and so then the other component of that is trying to match up the insurance level that they need based upon their their health situation absolutely a absolutely and making sure that that plan likely you, you'd want it to be hsa eligible because that's that that's a that's still a key component possibly well it it absolutely is and and ted actually both of you i think were involved in helping this this couple and we did go with an hsa option because if capital gains get a little bit too high or something else obscure happens with their income we've got the ability to contribute to the hsa and bring that modified or mysterious adjusted gross income i like that craig i'm gonna steal that one yes sir. uh bring that number down and make sure we can keep qualifying for those credits so we've got more implications here and then also does your income impact your medicare premiums that and more coming up on the wise money show with corhorn financial group i felt like that was the segment of mike all I did was talk. I hope that's all right. Yeah, you did, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, well, you, your <laughs> stories. You're, you're kind of necessary. Yeah. The only thing that could have been better is if it would have been this. Okay, so the segment of Kevin. So I'm, I'm looking at this because our question when Brad was talking about this is if I'm – because 65 is the age for Medicare – and again, it's very. Con this stuff is all very confusing. We talk about it because this is our native environment, but it is confusing. So Medicare is a socialized medicine program for people 65 and older, generally. But you can get on Medicare before age 65 if you have end-stage renal failure and a few other things. Disability. Disability. Four months of disability. Yeah. So the question was, can I get a Medicare supplement if I'm younger than 65? The short answer is no. The longer answer is if you're in Michigan, you can, but it's about $400 a month. So no. So is that something we should talk about on the show? Sure. On the That's a pretty narrow group. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's good to say when you say what the start date of Medicare, and that's why I said trick question. I know. Is, yep. is to an mention the disability. Yep. Because people, they know it, but they don't know it. And, so, and Craig, you made a good point comment in the middle of that is 24 months of checks uh -huh. so you need to be, have be drawing and then you're eligible for regular medicare but the plan that goes along with it is going to be different i don't think we need to go into the details of that but it's going to be okay so you're saying i have to have 24 months of disability checks and then i qualify for medicare correct yes yeah and then when you do in michigan you could get a supplement at about 400 bucks a yeah. month versus you know 120. What about Indiana? In no. Indiana, you can't get it. So what you're going to I don't want to say that's an no. advantage plan. Uh, right. There may be Indiana. there may be some some right. states yep. allow yep. it, some states yeah. don't allow it. Just it just doesn't. It. See, so you really need the the C. Right. Yeah. Part, that's why you part come see C of us. Medicare. Yeah. That's what you get under 65. The, but, but here's the good news. Uh, when you are uh, I was looking to see if we were recording for a minute. No. Uh, well, we are recording, but this is this yeah, is the no, YouTube. I'm aware. I'm aware. This is bonus content. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, so the people need to. It's good to know that when you are on disability under sixty five, when you turn sixty five, you get the same choices that you would have gotten had you not been on disability. So you get a whole new selection. Yes. So when you turn Medicare age sixty five, now you get to supplement for the rest of your life. Hmm. Yeah. So in, and, and you that, don't have to go through underwriting at that that's point, correct. correct? Which would be awful if you're it, disabled, it would, right? Because right. you're dis disabled. Yeah, you There's would. usually a reason. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let's get into let's get into that. You ask anything, you know. We'll, we'll, we'll we are here. We'll talk. Yeah. Let's get into that. So. Yeah. I I think Lindsay chuckles because she, she noticed. <laughs> did you did you give the rundown of? I mean, you did an amazing job in your um, Wise Money Minute video of giving the rundown of Medicare. Do you do you need to do that here? I don't, I mean, 
I, it, it, a, I, B, supplement, and D, or A, a B, and C? I mean, I can. It might turn into another segment. I was so a, so a monologue. So I have th- kind of th- three things. I like ACA, not Obamacare, not health care. I like ACA. Be- okay. Because it is the Affordable Care Act. And, and so what does that mean? Because people will complain a lot about what right. it costs. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't cost more than 8.5% of your income. So it is what the government has deemed you can afford. Yeah. So it's an Affordable Care Act. Right. And so I, I have gotten better over the years of saying you, that and explaining that. You sh- so so YouTubers got that. You should have interrupted yep. me during uh, that is there. That's good. That's gold. Yeah, right that's, there. That's good. Because it doesn't, again, it, it, this stuff, you can't get there from here. It doesn't make sense. And so thinking of it in those terms, 8.5%. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's let's me feel free to bring that up or or whatever. I mean, we'll let's start getting into Medicare, and uh, why don't you share? No, uh, no, I want the, I want these guys are the Medicare guys. I, I think I, it's important to get you. You haven't gotten to your Irma section at all. That's yet. where we're going right okay. now. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and third segment. Well, because is, what we're doing is we're we're. The segment is really about income and how it relates to health insurance and, and, and vice versa. Right. Yeah. It's not about Medicare. It's not about the ACA. It's about managing the income. Income and tying those together. Yep. Okay. So then this segment is really. I I'd start out with either having Ted say that. Yep. Well, how he likes to say it, and then yep. say, "Hey, now we're talking about Irma." Yep. Yeah. And boy, don't say that. Irma. <laughs> you can if you feel so compelled. Yeah. Who knows? So, I, you never know what comes. This out. is a it's racy gonna... show, Ted. Yeah. We're, we're living on the edge. Okay, yeah, so a, I got to ask. It's is, a hurricane. Is Irma? It's, um, this is real English uh, <laughs> definition. Is that an acronym or is that a? It's an acronym. Yeah. It's an acronym. So and yeah, I've actually had clients say it. Say it. Oh yeah, right, I've had so, a so handful. D- yeah. Make sure you. Use it. Explain it. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's properly pronounced Irma. Uh. Irma. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Let's get into it. Here's the point. Your income influences the um, the cost, the premium that you pay for your health insurance. Okay. It does. If you're on an employer-provided plan, maybe not so much. But when you get off that employer-provided plan, whether that's going to Medicare or whether that's going to, uh, Ted likes to call it Obamacare. I'm just kidding. I'll I'll tell you what he likes to call it. It, Then your income is going to influence it. So the point is be planning all along in advance and then do some financial planning at that time to ensure you're paying the right amount. Oh, we're talking about it. Right now, this is the Wise Money Show. Thanks for being here. My name's Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, and uh, and special guests, Craig Weicker and Ted Foster, uh, health insurance experts. If you've missed anything, every episode is on the YouTube channel. Lots of banter there on that last break, so go through and check that out. Go to YouTube, search Wise Money Show, and follow us there. Okay, I was just joking. What what do you like to call uh, the uh, Obamacare? <laughs> Very good. Uh, it is the Affordable Care Act, ACA. And the reason I like to use that particular terminology is it truly is affordable care as deemed by the federal government. And the federal government says we should not pay more than 8.5% of our income for our health insurance. Nevertheless, if your income is a little high, you don't like it that your premium is now $1,500 a month. Yeah. Uh, but if your income is high... If that's less than eight and a half percent, or more than eight and a half percent of your income, mm-hmm. a lot of percentage there, uh, you're going to find that it's affordable. You may not like it, but it's affordable. So, so here's the thing. I mean, this is, a, this is the geeky side. I mean, you guys know I'm known for that. You got your gross income. So, what's your salary? What do you make? That's that big number. Now, just budget like careful. Eight and a half percent. That's going to go for health insurance. Seven point six five percent. That's going to go towards FICA. X percent. I would say 15% minimum, that's going to go towards my retirement, okay? X percent goes towards, you know, 5% goes towards state taxes. X percent goes towards federal taxes. 10% goes to the Lord. I get to live on what's left. And maybe a little bit to the kids. Not necessarily in that order. Not in that order. Thank you, Craig. (laughs) Right? You get to live on the 2% left. (laughs) That's right. That's right. All right. Now, let's, let's flip the script here. Talk about Medicare. 
And uh, I want to define that really quick. But then the point is, does your income influence your Medicare premium? So just break down real quick, uh, you know, Medicare, and then let's talk about income. Ted, why don't, why don't you, uh, I'll, I'll break it down. And the, and the reason why we're talking about this is we've had a ton of folks that are coming to retirement and they're not yet 65. And so they're saying, hey, at six, what do I do to fill the gap between 60 something and 65? And so you're looking at an Affordable Care Act plan and then you're hopping on to Medicare. And there are some surprises when people hop onto Medicare because normally the the Part B premium when you when you look at Medicare you've got Part A B and then you could have a supplement and Part D which is the drug plan or you could have parts A B and C and C being the advantage Perfect. and it, it's only taken Ted fifteen years to <laughs> pound that into my head so the the Part B is the part that's pulled right out of your Social Security check right off the top. And for most folks, that number is 140 or 60. 148.50. 148.50. 148.50. These numbers change uh, like the weather in Michiana. That's right. Uh-huh. So it's 148. Think 150 bucks a month is going to come out of your Social Security check. 150 bucks a month is going to come out of your spouse's Social Security check. So that cost, you, you say, okay, well, that's the cost. And then if I had a supplement, there's something on top of that and a drug plan on top of that. Here's the interesting thing. That's if your income the prior, prior year is That's below right. a certain threshold. So this, this is a long road back to the question, does my income impact what I pay for my health insurance? Medicare is the socialized medicine program for people 65 and older. And one of the components of the cost of Medicare that I pay is my Part B premium. And at at, at one forty eight fifty, it's considerably more. Are you looking at those numbers, Mike? I'm looking at the numbers. I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What what are we what are we looking at, Ted? Okay. So so again, as Kevin said, they look at your income two years ago. So in 2021, we're looking at your income from 2019, up to a joint income of 176 thousand. It's one forty eight fifty. But if your income was above two hundred and seventy six thousand, up to three thirty, a lot of numbers. Uh, it's 386.10. And typically we see that's for you and for your spouse. That's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, And that's where it's like, it's what? Yeah. <laughs> you get a lot of that. And people say, well, what in the world does that matter? I don't ha- you know, my income isn't that. There are a lot of folks that toward, as they get towards the end of their working life, there's an unwinding of things that they've spent a lifetime winding up. So there might be a selling of a business. There might be a selling of a building. There might you might have been an employee your whole life and had a, a a reasonable income, but you get to retirement. And I've I've known lots of folks that want to do this. They say, okay, I've saved all this money, and all I want to do is just be debt free. Mm-hmm. So I want to pull a hundred and fifteen thousand out of my IRA. I'm I'm fine paying those taxes, but I want to pay off my house and the, the what we have left on the two cars because I just emotionally I just need to feel debt free. Well, you can do that, but not only are the taxes on those dollars that you pull out of the IRA or 401k going to be taxed at a higher rate because you're you're pulling a slug out in any one particular year, but you also are looking at the income related adjustment. Yeah. So let's just take that for example, because, you know, as we've talked about that with clients in the past, overcoming those emotions, it's it's hard to do. Okay, Mm -hmm. so sometimes we use numbers to do that. So in that situation, (laughs) your yeah, your your Medicare Part B premium would go from one forty eight fifty up to I'm going to say that three eighty six ten per person. So let's just say that's 200, that's, that's an extra 500 and some dollars a month that you're going to pay. And I'm a value shopper, guys. Like I'm a value shopper. I like spending as little as possible for the right thing. But if, if I've got some more bells and whistles, I might be willing to spend a little bit more for it. This is paying more for the same thing. You don't get any, there's no extra value here. You just have to pay more for it. So the other scenario, and I just ran into this. Yes, 
when you retire, you get on Medicare and you could sell a business, sell a property, you could inherit some dollars, something like that. And all of a sudden your income goes higher and you don't, you're not thinking about it because it's two years later now that you then get wild with this. What if you're making a decent amount before you retire, say 150,000, something like that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and spouses work and whatever. And then you go from making that amount to then being in retirement and not making that amount. Your income is based on, or your Medicare is based on your income two years ago while you were working, when your income was higher. So, Ted. Planning. Planning. Planning is the key here. Is there, there's also sometimes an exception, right? Yes. So can can you explain a little bit of that? I mean, it's certainly no guarantee. It is not. Uh, You can, so if, in Kevin's example, where you sold a building, so your income was moderate throughout your working career, but you sold something or inherited some money that was taxable and you have a spike. And I will say when you're going to file an appeal with Social Security, it truly needs to be a spike. If you have been earning a couple hundred thousand, then it goes up to 300 for a year and then back to 200. That spike won't won't really, they don't have any sympathy for you. But if your income was in the moderate range and all of a sudden it went into this high range, you have a good opportunity for Social Security to accept your your request yeah i they, they uh a a life change it's almost like a qualifying event a a life change something like that and they only have a couple that they allow and even those you might think it's black and white and sometimes they say no we're not going to allow it. it's it's very unclear as they've ruled on that before all right we've got more implications of your income financial planning and your health insurance costs that more coming up on the wise money show with corhorn financial group went way over there but i paused for Mm -hmm. yeah so the wfrn show is done after three segments for whatever reason so Lindsay has to cut that in and then we keep going got it all right 13 minutes land in the plane we can go wherever we want so you're gonna are you gonna list those out what what the the life-changing events we can. Go ahead. Why don't you do it? Let's well, marriage. Oh, yeah. I was just going to. Divorce, annulment, death of your spouse, work stoppage, work reduction, loss of income producing property, loss of pension income, employer settlement payment. So the the case that I was sharing with you guys, it's just, it's work reduction. Right. Well, actually, it's work stoppage, like retired. Yeah. So his income was here, and now it's here. So, did it, did you appeal? Yeah. So and there was an appeal, waiting, and, and it was awarded. It was awarded. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's you, it's a redetermination. You, you should yeah. tell that a redetermination. Can you tell it? I can tell it. How many appeals do you get? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know because you would need to uh, uh, probably appeal two years in a row. Yep. For the same thing. Yep. That's right. That's what I told these folks. Yeah. I don't think you're going to automatically get next year's also. Ted, are you trying to make me mad? <laughs> it's, I, I'm inspiring you to think. Really, you know, dig in there. It's for, early. It's early so for I, that. I, have, I have to appeal for what I'm appealing for. My You always have to, you know, 219. Yeah. You, you know. No, I know. And what's that. the form? SSA-44? Yeah. Yeah. You, you have it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. 13 minutes, then i got to run. Thanks for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and special guest Ted Foster and Craig Weicker, health insurance experts. We're breaking down how your income influences your health insurance premiums, even Medicare. That's what we're getting into right now. Connect with us, stay up to date on all Wise Money content, reach out with questions, whatever, wisemoneyshow.com. Find us right there and then all over social media, just search the Wise Money Show and engage with us there. Leave comments, leave questions there, and we'll address them on an upcoming program. All right, so guys, we're, we've been talking about Irma, <laughs> and which sounds like a hurricane, right? And it's not. It's uh, it, although it feels like a financial hurricane when you get that notice. Uh, Income-related monthly adjustment amount. Now, this is not a love letter from the IRS that you enjoy getting because basically what they're saying is, "Hey, thanks for signing up for Medicare. Congratulations, you're going to have to pay more for it." 
because your income from the prior prior year, two years ago, was higher than than it, you know uh, uh, this these certain thresholds. Okay, mm-hmm. for a married couple, your your income was higher than one hundred and seventy six thousand. If you're single or widowed or divorced, something like that, eighty eight thousand, something like eighty eight thousand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, so your income, congratulations, was higher than that threshold, and therefore we're going to make an income related monthly adjustment amount, IRMA, to your Medicare Part B and- And your Part D. And Part D, because you're that special. You have to pay more for both of those things. Now, what about if you're on Part C? That would still be included in, from your Part D into the cost of your Part C. And you've got to, when you're on Part C, you got to pay your Part B. Of course. Yes, right? Sir. Absolutely. And so yeah. even if, so if you're hearing this saying, well, I, I chose- I'm too smart. I chose Medicare Advantage Part C. That doesn't apply. I'll get around these rules. No. Not so fast. Not so fast. They got you. Okay, so we're talking about there's uh, Kevin. If you've got, still got it up, there's certain exceptions to the rule, life changing events, whatever, where you could actually appeal this Irma status. And so, what are those? And what's the form and all that? Yeah. So the form is SSA forty four. Yep. I, yes. Yep. Okay. So the, it's the, the, life ta- the life-changing events is if you got married and that changed your income, you were divorced, a death of a spouse, work stoppage, work reduction, loss of income-producing property, loss of pension income, or employment settlement payment. Okay, so let's break this down. How, how is it when you get married, your income can go down? That, I, like, I, right? Is that, is anyone confused by that? <laughs> Well, so yes. I understand no, no, the I, work I, no, stoppage I, or no, work reduction. I thought about this because I, I listened to the next Y step video that you did, yep. and you were pondering it then. And I thought, how can that happen? Now, certainly, if you're a guy and you get married, it's likely your disposable income will go down. <laughs> That's sure. correct, but, but <laughs> only if you're a guy. <laughs> or, <laughs> no, women too. Trust or, me. Or go away completely. Um, <laughs> Happily so. So the thresholds, here's here's how that works, Mike. The thresholds are, if I'm single, it's 88 to 111. And if I am above that, pretend that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a single guy and I'm at 150. Well, my stuff is getting reduced. Yep. So what do I do? I go and get married. Now, as a, as a married guy, my stuff is below. The 176. Yes. Yeah. Not a reason in and of itself to get married, but I mean, maybe something to consider. There you mm-hmm. go. Okay. But then farmersonly.com, the farmersonly.com. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you don't have to be lonely. That's right. Uh, so, but you, you, uh, the work reduction and work stoppage, I mean, those are probably the most likely. Mm-hmm. So, if you sell a yeah, business, for sure, you could, you could say that's work. Stoppage. Stoppage. I don't think, I, you know, they don't rule exactly the same every time, right? No. They don't. I, and I saw a situation, actually, I have some clients in this situation. One of the things that they did last year, they were, they were going to go to 70 before they turned on the faucet for Social Security. And that, that, again, from a planning perspective, that can make some sense. Well, last year when everything was uncertain, they said, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start drawing our Social Security. So they're a healthy income household and their Social Security is north of 50. Well, with their Social Security and his income, they're above. So they're paying the extra for, again, I'm I'm getting the same thing everyone else is. I just have the opportunity to pay extra. Now, when he retires next year, we're going to appeal that and we're planning on that extra that they're paying coming back down to paying what everyone else is paying, which is the Mm 14850 for Medicare Part B. Yeah. How long do these appeals usually take? Uh, A couple days? Is it like Amazon? No, uh, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not, not exactly. No, 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 no. I, I think my understanding, because I, again, I just had some folks that did this, and their appeal was granted. His situation was he worked, and now he no longer works. So they're looking at the prior prior, and they're saying, okay, we're going to uh, remove that. I, I, I believe it took a couple of months. 
Um, yeah, it's not quick. Y- you typically get a, a letter saying, hey, um, the, you, your appeal has been received. It's in a cargo trailer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Right. <laughs> you're paying this extra amount while you're waiting, and then you get some sort of refund. Yeah. Is yes, it a credit yeah. or is it? They, it's, they a, send- it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, a refund. Yeah. They, they will send you an actual refund. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're talking about IRMA, income-related monthly adjustment amount. Let's see. If you're proactive or if you think, like me, that politicians are elected based on popularity and votes and it's terribly unpopular – to raise taxes, but I can sneak one past the goalie by creating new taxes. Therefore, these IRMAs and these sorts of, well, if your income passes this threshold, then you have to pay more, likely will persist. Like those sorts of schemes will likely exist in the tax code for a while. And I could be naive. I could be uh, you know, whatever. But that's my suspicion. OK, so if you think that that might be more uh, of a permanent feature in the U.S. tax code or even health insurance, which we're talking about today, what can you do all along the way to plan for this or and prepare for this? How can you shelter some income throughout your working career while you're trying to achieve certain financial goals, but being mindful of these of these realities? Well, one of the things that you can do is if you most a lot of folks are in a situation where the only way they've been able to save is in a retirement plan, a qualified retirement plan that is tax sheltered and it's basically automatic savings. It comes out of my paycheck every two weeks. I don't see it. That's where that's the kind of the most powerful wealth building tool most folks have. And so they've got a big pile of money that's never been taxed. That's great. And there's some serious, you know, it's very powerful to have tax deferral. The problem is, is when I get to retirement and if I, if, if retirement is before 65 and I need to manipulate my income and the only potential I have for income is my stuff that's never been taxed, or, or Social Security, because Social Security, and again, it, this doesn't make sense, but it's likely that you'll pay taxes on 85 cents of every dollar that you'll receive from Social Security. So I, Social Security is going to be taxed. The My 401k that rolled into my IRA is going to be taxed. So really what I want is I want to be saving in a, a in a bucket of money that I've already paid taxes on. And I'm I'm not getting the the tax deferral, mm-hmm. but I am I I do have access to that money without moving the needle on how things uh, are f- affected for my health insurance. So that could be non qualified or it could be Roth IRA type money. You know, this is an everyone situation, but the circumstance I brought up earlier about the individual whose job was being eliminated and spouse got cancer. We've been intentional along the way. When when we started doing planning, no Roth, they didn't have a, a, a Roth IRA. Now, I think there's about 115000 or so in Roth accounts. So that's great. And then they had a fully funded emergency fund when they showed up. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. But we've been careful with his bonus along the way to be building up another non-IRA. They call it non-qualified, blah. Uh, uh, money in a separate, just joint account. And that's what we'd been planning on using to bridge during this time from work until age 65. We could use Roth if we needed to, if we ran out of that money. Um, And then, of course, we could always rely on the pre-tax money. But if we do that, now the income is going to be higher and we're going to have to pay more for health insurance. So it just, I mean, it takes sacrifice, mm-hmm. but it takes some proactive, some forethought, some financial plan. You're probably not thinking that. You're probably not thinking those sorts of things when you're 35, 45, 55. You might not even know some of these rules exist. I mean, even the that we mentioned earlier, that in this year, 2021 and 2022, that cliff that Craig mentioned, that's gone. It's now just a, a ramp. It's a slope. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, are they going to change that for 2023? Is it going to be permanent? We don't know. And it, but so it takes planning. Yes. 
I mean, they could change it retroactively. And this is the thing, as, as I'm kind of reflecting on the things that we've talked about today, this is incredibly complicated. And I've always had a little bit of a beef with the system that at 65, you've been accustomed to getting your health insurance dispensed a certain way. And at 65, it all changes, likely, in your situation. And you're, I don't know, at, at 53, I'm dealing with... Um, remembering things like I used to. (laughs) So I can't imagine what it'll be when I'm 65. And oh, by the way, everything's going to completely change Mm -hmm. at 65. This is one of the other things that we, uh, you know, we talk about required minimum distributions. We talk about, you know, like in this situation, Medicare and all that sort of stuff. And and there's a, a feeling of, well, my situation, my financial situation gets really simple and I don't really need a comprehensive financial planning don't need a CFP. And I would completely argue with that. I mean, these the, right at retirement and the first few years after, those are some of the most complicated years in your financial life where pulling on certain levers, pushing certain buttons can significantly influence your taxes by thousands of dollars. Yep. And, you're, and remember, your CFP is a generalist. Make, make sure they're working with a specialist. And the thing um, just... Personally, the thing I love the most about coming to work is that we have specialists on our team. I get to see Ted and Craig every day, and we get to work on client cases together. That is fantastic. And so, guys, thanks for being on the program today. I know I did most of the <laughs> talking. Totally okay. uh, all right. So, but <clears throat> uh, but absolutely, I mean, you're going to want your CFP to collaborate with specialists and experts like Ted Foster, Craig Weicker, Brad Miller on our team, Jacob Kersey and uh, make sure you're getting that comprehensive approach. So that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.